Welcome to Aorin Tech Channel, welcome to the last section of the course. And as we said in the previous video, we've now looked at all of the main surfacing tools, and in this one, we'll go over some of the remaining tools, which aren't really used quite so often. The first one is flattened surface. Now, if we've ever used SOLIDWORKS sheet metal, we've probably come across something quite similar to this. It just lets us flatten curved surfaces. First, we'll have a look at a basic example, then we'll talk about a more practical example. So to show us how the tool works, I'll start a new bar, and I'm going to start a sketch on the front plane, and sketch a three-point arc like this. I'll make the two ends horizontal. I'll say as 200mm wide with a radius of 100mm. Then we'll use this to make an extruded surface. So let's go mid-plane, 200mm wide also. And then press OK. And we have a curved surface like this. Now let's say we need to flatten this for some reason. Maybe making a decal, or we are making a part from fabric or paper, or even sheet metal. To do this we can go to surfaces. We can go to surface flatten which is here. And first we need to choose the surface we want to flatten. So let's choose this one. And then we need to choose an edge or a vertex to flatten from. So let's choose this lower edge. And we should get a preview like this. So this is the flattened or unfolded version of that curved surface. We've got the accuracy down here. I'll set the accuracy all the way down to zero. We can see the mesh is quite big there. And when we press OK, we've now got that flattened surface. We've still also got the original curved surface as well. Now if I just get the measure tool from the following tab, and I measure this edge, we can see it's 314.16mm, but if I measure this one, it's actually slightly less, 3398 So that's just because we set the accuracy as low as it would go, so those two lengths don't quite match. So for example, if we go back and we added that surface flatten feature, and now if I put the accuracy all the way to the top right to the end of the slider, it's gonna take a little while to think about what it's doing. And then eventually, we'll have a mesh that's so dense we can't really even see it. It just looks like the entire surface is filled in. We can then press OK. And then we'll create the new flattened surface with a higher accuracy. So again, it's gonna take a little bit of time to calculate how it actually does that. So we can set the accuracy higher if we want, if we really need a very accurate surface. But it will take a little bit more time to calculate. And now if we get the measure tool again. Remember this one was 314.16. And now this one is also exactly the same, 314.16. So we can set the accuracy all the way up to the top, but it will slow down our model. And it will only be a little bit more accurate, really. Now I'm going to delete that feature, the surface flatten that we just made. And we'll have a look at a few more options in that tool. So firstly, let's start a sketch on the top plane. We'll go to a normal two view, so we're looking down on our model from above. Let's get a center line. And draw a center line across the middle of the part like this. Then get a center point circle. And draw a circle at the midpoint of that center line. Give that a 100mm diameter. And then also get the line tool. And draw a line straight up the middle here, to the edge. And then another one down the middle here, to the bottom. We should end up with something that looks like this. We're now going to use this sketch to split that surface into smaller faces. So go to Features, Curves, Split Line. Then make sure we're on the projection option. Make sure we've got that sketch that we just drew in the selection here. And then for the surface, let's choose just that surface we made. Press OK. And we've now split that surface into three smaller faces. Now we can do the flatten again. So let's go to Surfaces, Surface Flatten. This time we'll choose this first surface. We'll choose the same lower edge. And we can see we've just flattened that face in the preview. We can also choose the rest of the faces and they'll all be flattened together. But before we press OK, we can also click here in Additional Entities. Then we can select the two halves of that circle. And we can see that the circle profile will now be projected onto that new flattened face. So if I press OK, we've now got a new flattened face. And it's a little bit hard to see, but we do have that circle projected onto the flattened face. 
So this can be really useful if we are trying to make maybe some labels or decals that we want to put to a curved or rounded surface. And then finally, if we edit that feature again, the surface flatten feature. We can also add some small relief cuts. We can put a check in the box. And then we can choose those two straight lines that we added on the right and the left. And then we can press OK. And if I zoom in, we can see we've added two small slits here around where the circle is. So in this case, we probably wouldn't need them because we're basically just flattening in one plane. We're kind of unrolling the shape. But if this was more of a dome shape rather than a cylinder, we might need to add more relief cuts to help it flatten out from 3D to 2D properly without tearing or crinkling. So we can manually add these relief cuts in like that. In terms of actually using the flattened surface feature, Personally, we've used it quite a few times, one in particular where it was useful. We were creating some plywood furniture for a client and they had plywood curved sides on the furniture. And normally we model these in solid work sheet metal and then flattened parts. And then the factory uses those 2D templates to cut out the flat plywood and then curve it around the chairs. But for some reason, I had one part that wouldn't flatten properly. It must have been a non-standard pen or something. So instead of using the flattening in sheet metal, I was able to just copy that surface and then use the surface flatten. And then I could use that 2D flattened surface to make a 2D DXF file, which could then be used to make the template. Another example we've also seen online was somebody making a pair of shoes in SOLIDWORKS. They were then flattening each of the faces and then printing out those flattened faces and tracing around them on leather or canvas and then using all of those different parts to make the different parts of the shoe that they could then stitch together. And then finally another example that we've also used ourselves, we've previously modeled up some bicycle frames for clients. And often these have tubes that join at different angles. So I'm gonna start a new part to explain this one. We don't have to follow along with this, we can just watch. So when modeling these bike frames, we have tubes that join at different angles. Say for example, we have a tube that's 1 inch in diameter, so 25.4 millimeters. It's got 1 millimeters wall thickness. And let's say it's 100 millimeters long, like this. So this isn't necessarily pure surfacing, but we can use the surfacing tools to help us do things like this. So if we had another tube joining this one from the side, like this. So let's say we had another one that was also 1 inch diameter, 1 millimeter wall thickness, and it came in from the side. Let's offset it. And let's go in up the next, like this. I'm gonna make it so the two parts don't merge so we can see the join there. So if we have two tubes that join like this, when we cut this tube on the left, we have to grind away this curved shape here. So the two tubes fit together nicely and then we can weld them together. And it can really speed things up if we have a template. So we don't have to go back and forth and constantly check the fit. So what we can do is make a 2D template, print it onto paper, and then cut it out with scissors, wrap it around the tube, and it basically shows us where we need to cut. And we have a straight tube like this, it's pretty easy to do. We can basically model up the tubes as sheet metal parts, and then we can unroll the tube or flatten it, and then we can get the profile and use it as a template. The problem comes when we have a curved tube, because we can't actually flatten a curved tube in SOLIDWORKS sheet metal. So if we had the tube that was more like this, maybe something with a radius of 100 millimeters, 15 millimeters out to the left and 50 millimeters upwards. And then I'll add a new plane on the end of that curve. I'll throw out the tube profile. Also 1 inch 1 millimeter wall thickness. And then sweep along it. Like this. And then we'll finally trim the end of the tube using the other one. Using a combined feature and a subtract option. We should end up with something like this. So it's a curved tube and we need to cut away the profile on the end of it. 
but unfortunately it's not possible to flatten these curved tubes in sheer metal, so instead we can use the surface flatten. To do this first off, I'm gonna cut a very small slit along the top of the tube just so that we've got two halves of the tube that we can flatten along. So I'm going to use a center rectangle. I'm just gonna make it 0.01 millimeters. So it's basically like we can ignore it, it's so thin. I'm gonna make that cut all the way through. And we might have to go in both directions to ensure it cuts all the way through the tube. Then finally we can go to the surfaces tab. We can choose flatten surface or surface flatten. Let's choose that face here. And for the edge. Let's choose the edge of the cut we just made. And we can see on the preview, we're gonna make a shape that follows that cut all the way around as it wraps around the tube. And if I press OK, it's a surface like this. We can now save this surface as a DXF. We could print it out, we could cut it out with scissors, and then we could wrap it around the curved tube, and that will give us a guideline of where we need to cut. And there probably are some areas, it will be a little bit crinkled or a little bit stretched due to the nature of a curved face turning into a flat face, but will definitely be much easier than just trying to eyeball it. So that's the surface flatten tool. It is a bit of a specialist tool, but when we do need it, it's very useful. To use it, just select the surface, then select the edge of the vertex we want to flatten from. We can also add in additional entities, things like sketches, which will be projected onto the flat surface. And we can also add relief cuts, which are manually sketched in, and they can sometimes help with flattening a 3D surface out into a 2D surface. In the next video, we'll be looking at the surface from Mesh Tool. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe if you like. I hope it can be a little helpful and useful.